Producers have a big investment in making hay and storing that hay and all the handling that they do with it. So it's really important that we come up with ways that we can efficiently feed that hay to make sure that uh, we're getting the best out of that, those nutrients and making sure that they're uh, not doing a lot of damage to the pasture. There have been several studies that have looked at bale feeding strategies and feeding hay right outside on the ground can result in dry matter losses in excess of 20%. And some of those losses can be very, very high. And these wagon feeders uh, typically uh, can, can be more convenient for putting out into a pasture, but oftentimes our dry matter losses there may still be in the 10 to 15 percentage range. Most folks though will be feeding with a hay ring and dry matter losses there may be four to 10%. A lot of that still will come in contact with the ground and be lost outside of the hay ring itself. One of the solutions for this is to look at other strategies with these hay rings uh, that actually elevate those bales off of the ground to minimize those losses even more. And that's where these cone ring feeders come into play. Those cone ring feeders may have dry matter losses uh, lower than 4% which is a great improvement even over a regular hay ring. Some folks will use a hay unroller and that's a really good strategy too if you're wanting to distribute nutrients across the field, but the dry matter losses associated with a hay unroller are highly variable and it does take some time to use it as well. Dry matter losses typically we would see in the 5 to 10 percent range uh, if they clean it up quick. But there's some new strategies that have come along that allow us to feed that bale a lot quicker and uh, using a me mechanized version of an unroller which actually feeds that bale out. It pulls the bale apart really slowly. Uh, it uses the hydraulics of the tractor so uh, we can control the rate at which it's being put out. So it's a very uh, uh, useful device to be able to meter it out in a more uh, uh, standard way. It's got chains that keep those two uh, rollers rolling in unison with one another so that it feeds it out. And this one's been outfitted with a skirt so that it can feed over outside of the edge of the, uh, the wheel so it doesn't get tracked into the mud. Plus, if one wanted to, they could put that uh, so that it would feed over into a bunk. And you can see in this case that it really does uh, feed out regardless of whatever direction that that bale was rolled, rolled up. One really a great advantage of it compared to an unroller, which has to be unrolled the same way it was rolled up. Uh, with baleage bales, those are so dense and compact, it's very challenging uh, for them to, uh, uh, to be uh, distributed out. One of the challenges with these bale feeders, though, is the control of the last little bit of the bale. That last little bit of the bale sometimes will come out in a big clump if we're not careful. This is particularly an issue with some of the dense core uh, type bales. Now one of the challenges oftentimes too of course is uh, loading this up and this one actually has an indicator gauge there so if you're feeding a five foot bale you line that yellow uh, marker up with the five foot bale and this is really helpful once you already have a, a bale on the machine and you're trying to load up a second bale uh, onto the machine. When we're feeding this out, uh, we're really wanting to uh, make sure that we're getting good distribution and we're not spending a lot of time. So we developed a little bit of a study to try to determine uh, how much loss that we're getting, but more importantly, how much time it's taking uh, to feed with these bale feeders versus the other uh, more typical options that we might see. Um, we're also concerned about how much residue is left in the field and what kind of mud and muck might be left there in the field uh, that might have carryover effects into the spring. So we wanted to look at both of those aspects in a detailed study and we compared that against just using a uh, bale fed out on the ground with no ring around it whatsoever. We also looked at using a hay ring itself, um, a hay wagon feeder, a hay unroller, and a chained and chainless bale feeder so that we were comparing all of these against the hay non uh, hay ring control. With the hay ring we know that uh, those losses are going to be in that 5 to 10 percent range and that's typically what we would see but we also wanted to capture uh, the time it was spending feeding these bales as well as the mess that was made around these different systems.
With the chained and the chainless bail feeders, our dry matter losses typically were less than 5%. Uh, we, we were able to average much less than 5%. And what we wanted to also look at is the time that was spent uh, feeding this hay bale out. So what we did was we, we looked at uh, within identical pastures where we were feeding these heifers, we measured the time once we entered into that pasture and fed the bale out and then when we left the pasture so that we could get a time of the actual feeding of itself. Now that didn't ca uh, cover any of the time that it took to load the bale or to travel to the field so that we were treating everything the same. So we simply looked at the time. Then we looked at the amount of residue that was left in the field as well and what kind of damage it might be doing uh, out in the pasture uh, so that we were looking at the hoof traffic and the mud and the muck that might be left behind as well as we took some measurements of the residue. So if we look at unrolling a bale out in the field we found that it took about two and a half times as much time to actually feed compared to a no hay ring control. If we fed with a hay ring what we found was that it took about 25% more time. With a hay wagon it took about 50% more time. But the chained and the chainless bale feeders actually ended up being essentially the same as feeding with no hay ring at all. So it's really a, a good system and you're spreading out this damage a lot more. So as a consequence uh, if we look at feeding this out and, and the amount of mess that's left in the field with a no hay ring control, we saw significant damage out there. And then with the hay ring, we saw the, uh, a little bit more, but with the hay wagon, we saw the most. And if we look at these chained or chainless feeders and an unroller, we're basically distributing across the whole pasture. Just like in this field where we feed our spring calvers, uh, we can distribute that damage across the whole field and it allows it to grow back quickly. So what are some of the pros for these bale feeding systems like this? One of the major pros is that we can carry multiple bales to the field and feed them very quickly and safely. We can spread the nutrients out in the pasture and we can reduce the damage to the pasture around the hay feeding areas. It's also a lot faster to feed than an unroller and we can end up with a lot lower dry matter loss and it's superior to a hay ring or a cone feeder. Plus it's easy to convert over into feeding into a hay bunk and it's easy to use. Very convenient. And works off of hydraulics and minimizes the weight on the three-point hitch of the tractor. Some of the cons that are involved with these bale feeding systems is that it's sometimes frustrating to get that last bit of the core of the bale dispersed. Um, it is also a challenge to operate in the direction that the bale was baled. That's important if you have one of the chain bale feeders and it also has more moving parts. The other big challenge of course is the price. A three point hitch mounted version of this would run you eight to ten thousand dollars. A chained version would be in the twelve to fifteen thousand dollar range and the chainless version would be in excess of fourteen thousand dollars. To kind of pencil this out, we're really going to be looking at operations that have at least a hundred head of cattle that they're feeding on a daily basis. So if we were to give it an overall rating, our overall rating here would be about a four and a half stars. It's got some really good value that it adds to the hay feeding operation and it's a really convenient way to feed hay while dispersing nutrients across the field. There are a couple different companies that are making these bale feeders. Um, Hustler equipment which was the type of system that we tested here uh, and tube lines making a very similar product and there are a few other companies making these as well and we should acknowledge that Hustler equipment provided the equipment for this study. Uh, we see, received no financial contribution from them but one of our research farms did buy one of the machines at about a 10 percent discount after the study and I've really have, have used it extensively since. We should also acknowledge the role of the Georgia Beef Commission in providing funding for this uh, analysis and for this video. So we really appreciate their contribution and we hope that you've enjoyed this, this program. <laughs>